Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Are you looking for dinner inspiration? Are you sick of making the same things over and over again? I got you. So if you are new to my channel, what I do is basically find new recipes. Most of the time, these recipes are the first time we're ever tasting them on camera. First time we're ever trying them. But what I do is I go out on Pinterest, I go out on the web and I find all different sorts of recipes. I go through them very meticulously because I know our tastes, I know what we like and what we don't like, and I make sure that it's something that I think we'll like. Then we make it, I make any tweaks that I think my family would prefer, and then we do a taste test for you. And that way, you don't have to go out there and look for these recipes. You can just come back here every single week, and I've got usually around three new recipes every Friday, and then sometimes on Tuesdays, I have even more recipes for you. Today, I'm gonna be making a very simple beef and broccoli. I'm gonna serve this with rice, the guys are not here right now. They will be back in just a little bit. This should not take very long at all. I'm gonna go ahead and get our rice started in the Instant Pot first. I rinsed my rice. I've got just a little over a cup of rice here. And I just added my water. So I did just a little more than the one to one ratio. So I have about a cup and not even a quarter of rice. And I did about a cup and a quarter, a little more of water. Okay, so let's get this going. I'm going to cook it on high pressure for probably, let's do seven minutes and then we'll let it slow release for about eight or nine minutes. Today I'm gonna to be using my large 12 inch cast iron skillet. So I've already got it starting to heat up and I've already measured out all of my ingredients. The only thing I need to do is just chop our broccoli. So I need about a half a cup of hot water. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave. To our hot water, we're gonna add some garlic. I've got about maybe two cloves of minced garlic two and a half tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar, a teaspoon and a half of cornstarch, and about a tablespoon and a half of sesame oil. I will tell you, I did cut this recipe in half. I'm only gonna do it for four servings instead of eight. So just be aware that the original recipe is double all of this. Okay, I have added all of my broccoli to about a tablespoon of olive oil here in this hot skillet. We're just gonna cook it until it's pretty soft. So I'm just gonna kind of stand here and just turn it, move it around, and I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, it's been about five or six minutes. I did pull out the larger pieces and cut them up just so it's gonna be easier to eat and it would be quicker for everything to cook. So I do recommend cutting, in, cutting this into small pieces. But this is done, let's remove it, and then we're going to cook our meat. I did go ahead and kind of cheat and bought the meat that is already thinly sliced for like stir fry. I have about a pound here. I'm gonna add another tablespoon or so of olive oil in, and we're gonna add that in. We're just gonna cook this until it's pretty much browned and then we'll be adding in our sauce. Now that our meat is pretty much brown, we're gonna add in our sauce that we made earlier. So I'm just gonna pour this over and bring it up to a simmer. And we're gonna add all of our broccoli back in and just stir it around. And we're just gonna let this cook for about three minutes and then lunch will be ready. The recipe doesn't call for it, but Steven calls for it. He wants a little bit of hoisin sauce in this too, so I'm gonna add some in. Maybe a tablespoon or so. And let's just stir that around and let that combine in there with it. Oh man, this smells so good. <laughs> okay. Let's eat. That made me some beef with broccoli. I'm telling you. <laughs> Looks good. So, Already, I wish I would have made more sauce, but you know, I should have known that. Mm, very good. I love the sauce. that has got that sweet, savory, garlicky flavor to it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. You know what else would be good in the sauce though? What's that? A little bit of ginger. 
Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Kind of brighten it up a little bit. And... Yeah. I mean, it's got brown sugar in it to mm -hmm. give you that sweetness, but I think a little bit of ginger too. Yeah. That'd make it interesting. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Great flavors. Uh, very reminiscent of the beef with broccoli that I've had before at the restaurant. Right. So, yeah. Awesome. Good. One pot meal, very easy. Mm -hmm. Double the sauce. This is delicious. I do wish there was a little more sauce, like we said, but other than that, this is so good. It was so easy, all in one pot, all so fast. Perfect. Someone was late to the game. He got home a little bit later than Steven. That's good. He doesn't like uh, plain rice. If you've been here for a while, then you probably know that. So he didn't eat, get any rice with his. He just got the beef and broccoli. But as soon as he took a bite, he said, mmm. So all three of us, give this a thumbs up. Okay, y'all, it is time for our second meal. And this one I found on Pinterest, like I find most of my things. But I was on the phone with my friend Jessica from Keep Calm and Clean, Jesse Christine, here on YouTube. Anyway, I was on the phone with her, and I was explaining it to her. She said, that sounds like the KFC bowls, and I had no clue. So I did a quick Google search, and sure enough, this is pretty much the knockoff version, the at-home version of KFC bowls. So if you're familiar with those, you know what this is. If you aren't, this is just a mashed potato casserole with some crispy chicken on top. It just sounds really yummy. I can't believe I've never had this at KFC, but we're gonna make it here at home. I am going the easy route. I'm using frozen chicken breasts that are already cooked, obviously, or chicken tenders. Um, so these are just like crispy chicken tenders. I just used the whole bag. I think it calls for eight, but there were 10 in my bag. Some corn. I'm gonna make homemade mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot, but you could definitely just buy pre-made mashed potatoes if you wanted to, just to make this even easier. It calls for cheddar cheese. I had some Monterey Jack left over as well as some cheddar cheese, so I'm just doing a mixture. And then we will make this brown gravy to go on top. Very, very simple. Okay, so I have my potatoes here in this little steamer bowl, basically, that goes in here. We need five to six cups of mashed potatoes. I don't know if I got it right. We shall see. <laughs> but I'm gonna cook these on high pressure for about 10 minutes. So while I wait on that to come up to pressure, I am going to, these have been sitting out for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna try and slice these some, not a whole lot. They're still pretty frozen, but we're gonna give it a, a, a try. And then after that, I will go ahead and preheat my oven. This is not too bad at all. My misen knife is doing quite nicely, just cutting right through these. It's just gonna make them a little bit easier to serve if they're in smaller pieces like this. So I'm gonna continue on. I am preheating the oven to 400. Okay, so this only has a minute left. What I'll do is just drain off any excess water that's on there. And then I'll just be adding heavy whipping cream, a little bit of butter, and some anti no nos. And then I always use my hand mixer just to make sure that they're super smooth. Okay, so I've put them in this 9x13 dish and I'm just kind of spreading it out. I think it was the perfect amount of potatoes. Finding a few lumps in there, which makes me sad, but that's okay. I've got some frozen corn here that's been sitting out for quite a while now. We're just gonna sprinkle that on top. You need about a cup. Mine, my uh, bag of corn didn't quite have a cup left. Next, we're gonna top it with our cheese. Right on cue, ma'am. Yeah. She said, as soon as she heard me say cheese, she said, Wow. Don't worry, we'll give her some. Says you just need a cup of cheese. I probably have a little more. Gracie Lou, give me just a second, baby. Thank you, please. Um, I probably have a little bit more, but we really love cheese in this house, don't we? Do you love cheese? <coughs> and lastly, we're just going to place our chicken on top and you can slice it however you want. Um, and you don't have to slice it if you don't want to, but it just makes it a lot easier to serve, I feel like. So I'm gonna place all of this all over the top. Okay, so this is going in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Now, if you have fresh chicken or 
already made chicken, just like refrigerated chicken, you'll only need to do it for 15 minutes. But because mine is frozen, we're gonna do it for 20 minutes. It is going in uncovered. Okay, while that is in the oven, we're just gonna go ahead and make this according to package directions and we'll just pour brown gravy over the top of each serving. Fix your hair. <laughs> All right, KFC bowl. That's right. Oh man, look at that. I mean, this is comfort food right here. Some potatoes and corn on the cob. It's not on the cob, but not on the cob. Right. Corn off the cob. <laughs> <laughs> some corn. How about that? There you go. Man, and then the gravy on the top. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna eat this so fast. <laughs> well, there's plenty more in there. That is delicious. Oh man, mashed potatoes. Oh yeah. The chicken is outstanding. It's, it's I mean, it's just frozen chicken that I found at the grocery that store. It's outstanding. Wow, okay. Yeah, really good. Love that, the corn with the mashed potatoes. The, yeah. The sweetness of the corn, that gravy, man. So I was really, I thought maybe I should just do homemade mm. chicken tenders, but it's okay to do it this mm -hmm. way. Oh, Cole says, mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm excited. I'm gonna dig in. Wow. Yay. Yes. I love how easy this was too. This is delicious. Mm. So Cole had a good point. He said, mom, I don't think you need to make homemade chicken tenders because they kind of it kind of gets lost because it's all mixed in together, it gets lost in here. So, I mean, the chicken is great, but you don't have to make, you know, this great homemade chicken to go with this because it's all in this bowl together. Comfort food. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, it's really good. Really good. Love the ingredients okay. in here. All just goes really well together. Yay. All right, another winter dinner. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all, it is our third meal of the week and that means it's Subby Supper night. This recipe comes from Diana. Diana and I have met on Instagram and YouTube and chatted back and forth many, many times. She also, fun fact, has a small YouTube channel where she shares the most relaxing beach content you will ever see. So be sure to go check it out. I'll have it linked in the description box. But Diana sent me this one and she said, you don't have to say my name. You don't have to give me credit. I just wanted to share it with you. If you've been around for a while, you know that we love meatloaf. Cole especially loves meatloaf. That's like his favorite meal. And this one is a taco meatloaf. I remember your tips and you told me that using the stand mixer is great when you're making a meatloaf. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use my stand mixer to mix all the ingredients together so I don't have to use my hands. I'm really excited. But thank you, Diana, for sending this in. I always love chatting with you on Instagram. Let's get started. It's kind of early, but meatloaf takes a while. So we're gonna preheat the oven to 350. In my mixer, I already have two pounds of ground beef. I'm gonna add one and a half cups of crushed Doritos. Two eggs. I've got one can of Rotel. This is the Aldi brand Rotel. That's a lot of liquid in there. It doesn't say to drain it. I'm gonna drain a little bit. Okay, adding that in. I've got my onion that I diced either a pack of taco seasoning or three tablespoons of homemade. Said to use four ounces of corn, I'm using almost a cup of frozen corn. Then you need one and a half cups of cheese. I've got half pepper jack, half cheddar. I think this is a little too much cheese maybe, so somebody will be happy to hear that. I'm sure she'll take care of that for me. She's sitting right over here next to me. Got a little leftover and let's start mixing. I'm so excited that I don't have to use my hands. Well, that was ridiculously easy. Thankful for that. Okay, let's put this in a loaf pan. I've got a meatloaf pan here. I got mine from Amazon. I will try and remember to link it below. It's nice because you can just lift it up and all of the fat and juices kind of go below it. But 
I always used to just use a loaf, just a regular loaf pan before I had this. The recipe says to make two small loaves with this, but we're just gonna do one large loaf. I normally do two pounds of meat here in this pan, so it should be perfectly fine. I might just have to bake it for a little bit longer. That's it, this is going in the oven at 350 for about an hour. It'll probably take closer to an hour and a half since I have a large loaf. So I set the timer for an hour. We'll check it at that point, but I'm guessing it'll be more like 90 minutes. So it's been an hour and this is where we're at. We want it to get to 160. So I'm gonna put it in for another, we'll check it after another 20 to 30 minutes. Our meatloaf is done. I'm just gonna add a little extra cheese on top and we'll pop it back in the oven just to let that melt down. So a little confession, when I was serving this up, I thought, oh my gosh, there's still raw pieces of meat in there. Nope, that's the Rotel. <laughs> it is definitely up to temperature, we're good to go. So, you ready to do this? Without further ado. That's right. Taco meatloaf. Taco meatloaf. That's what's for dinner. That's right. I mean, I have a feeling this is gonna be delicious. Oh yeah, it smells like that good taco meat. Cole is about to pass out. He's so happy. This is amazing. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yes. Yay. I'm so excited. Oh, man. First of all, it's spicy. And it's also... Mm, not dry. Not dry. Excellent. So that was my mm. fear. I was, I was scared that I put too many... Mm -mm. I don't know. I was just scared mm. that it was going to come out mm. a little dry. Mm. It's perfect. Man, lots of flavor. Okay. And then the meat. I mean, packed full of good uh, taco flavors yeah. in there. Oh, wow. That is really good. I am so excited. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm about to dig in. Let me dig in. I'll be right back. Mm. I have to tell you, my brain had a hard time comprehending this. It's delicious, number one. Mm -hmm. But my brain was like, wait, this is tacos. But no, it's meatloaf. Which one is it? It can't be both. <laughs> yeah. But, so... You were saying... Maybe a little enchilada sauce? So, meatloaf normally has, like, ketchup on top or some yeah. type of sauce on top. So, if you put some red enchilada sauce on top... Yeah. Okay, I'm digging it. Then we're, we're, we're swinging, for the, swinging for the fences when we do that. <laughs> I don't know that term or that, that little saying, but... Is that baseball? Swinging for the fences, I guess. Is it? I don't know. That I don't watch baseball. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is so delicious, Diana. Thank you for sharing this with us. Colt, does it rank up there with one of your favorite it, meatloafs it, ever? It ranks. Okay. He loves meatloaf and he's picky about it, so that's impressive. Mm. So if you're wondering about this corn, just stay tuned. I have another video coming up very soon that's gonna show you how to make this. Ma'am. Ma'am. Sweet girl. Daddy's still enjoying it. Look at that little leg. <laughs> Get it, girl. Oh, yeah. Get it. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's winter dinners. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. If that subscribe button below is still red, that means you have not joined the family. So go ahead and click that before you leave. Also, if you are looking for more dinner recipes and ideas and inspiration, be sure to go check out my website. It's just mandyinthemaking.com. I've got lots of recipes on there for you. Thanks y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye. And she said, that sounds like the key, the key? The key. Nope. Ma'am. Gracie Lou, I'm trying to record. Can you give me minutes? Give me minutes. Thank you, thank you. And then you need about one and a half cups of cheese. I've got half. Thank you. The oven's ready. 
Okay, so the... Do you see who's sitting over here next to me? Because she knows I have the cheese. So if you're wondering about this corn, make sure you stay tuned in a very... Yeah. Not very. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Pretty background, but prettier foreground. Oh, <laughs> I'm a big cheese head. A cheese head? I don't know. Okay. All right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big cheese head. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's what I meant to say. Cheesy, I'm cheesy. I feel like I have something in my teeth. It's easy being cheesy. Hold, please. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's worth Week's worth. You always say that. Why yeah. do I say you that? You get tangled up on that all the time. Every time. Okay. Week's worth of it. What's wrong with that? I don't know. There's it's nothing wrong with it. It just feels weird when it comes out and I'm like. Mm. Like a week's worth of that. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I can't say it. I can't, I can't talk it. either. I don't mind. No, you can't. All right. Ready? <laughs>